piss man. Dr. Joseph Pompey, who's got a thing about annoying people with sound. Hey, you. Ma'am. Ma'am. Please wake up. No sleeping in the library. <laughs> most people of his age don't know much about sound. The most antisocial they can get is turning their car's hi-fi up in a quiet neighborhood. And Dr. Pompey has studied sound for so long, he's got letters after his name. And he came up with something a bit better. That's not a speaker system. Now this. This is a speaker system. The whole idea of his sound spotlight system is to make sure that only one person can hear him, even though they're 20 meters away. Hey, you there. You on the laptop. Are you downloading illegal files to the library network? I hope not. Hey, you there, studying. Miss, can you hear me? I think it's time for a break. Hey, you, looking at CDs. We're watching. <laughs> Taking the mickey out of innocent readers might seem a bit childish, but there's a reason why Dr. Pompey comes here to test his kit. A library is about the most sensitive area you can think of for background noise and generating sound that people don't want to hear. But with the audio spotlight, we can deliver sound specifically directly to people within the library without bothering the other people that are reading quietly. One of the things is we can bring in a couple of Latin dancers, send them some hot salsa music, they can dance all they like in the middle of the library to all the music that they want without bothering the other people nearby who want to sit, read, or work quietly. The system works like this. First, your voice is transformed into high-frequency ultrasound, sound so high no one can hear it. Ultrasound is highly directional, so, like a torch, it can be pointed at someone standing a long way away. Although they cannot hear the ultrasound, it causes secondary vibrations in the air around them, and it's that sound the person hears. So if you imagine you're in a room and I shine a flashlight at you, it's very bright for you, but it's very dark for everybody else. Much the same way, the audio spotlight creates a very narrow beam of sound that you can shine at a listener. They hear it very clearly, and it doesn't create noise that might bother other people in the same space. It's already being used in museums, and soon Dr. Pompey hopes he'll have his system in TV sets, so that only one person in the room can hear it. The others can get on with something much more boring. But whatever its practical use is, it remains a great toy. Hey, excuse me, miss. It's a really nice shirt you've got on. These are called electromyographic signals. The signals are picked up by electrodes planted on the skin. Uh, the electrodes basically look like this. They're tiny little pads, much like you have in a doctor's office. So if she said the future out loud... The future? We have the signal that's corresponding to that muscular activity. But with subvocal speech, she doesn't have to move her mouth. She could say that word silently. So if she would say the future silently. Here she said the future, but she didn't move her lips. And you can see that there is still the same signal being picked up by the electrodes underneath her throat. Once the electrodes capture the signal, they can be transmitted as if through a cell phone to someone with an earpiece receiver. So the newer sensors are the size of a dime, and they're going to continue to get smaller in the not very distant future. In Chicago, Illinois, a world authority on microwave hearing shows how it could work. I'm hearing a microwave pulse like a click. Now it sounds like a, a chirp with a tonal quality to it. Professor James Lin is hearing sounds that aren't there, but he's not crazy. Pulses of microwave energy are being generated and fired at him from behind. Microwaves can be heard depending on the individual, uh, depending on the hearing acu acuity of the individual. Individuals with a fairly normal hearing can hear microwaves at a quite a low level. The energy of the absorbed microwaves causes brain tissue to very slightly heat up and expand, causing a pressure wave to be picked up by the hearing mechanism in the inner ear. Professor Lin is far from hearing voices, 
but it could be possible to send coded signals to an agent this way. Brain is an electrical organ. Uh, it is uh, susceptible to electrical signals. Since microwave is electrical, therefore, in principle, one could uh, embed or encode information in the microwave signal.